Uh, today, I'm happy to share a conversation between the other two co-hosts of the podcast, Chitra and Gayatri. In this freewheeling conversation and reflections, they touch upon Chitra's practice of annual year and reflection. And Gayatri talks about her professional achievements this year, as well as some of the lowlights that she had. Chitra shares her entrepreneurial journey in the learning space and uh, how the co-founders kind of supported each other and delving into authorship, which is supposed to be a secret, and their experiences and the practices as coaches and how that influenced their ways of working. The significance of time management and also just being, not always doing. And uh, they also share what they would like to take up as a practice in the coming year. And about managing energy more than the time to be effective overall. About uh, managing FOMO, you know, the fear of missing out, by sifting through the barrage of information overload and pick the ones that are most relevant for you and how do you get started on that. The need and importance of having safe spaces to help explore problem spaces and reflect. And they also talk about their ideas for the coming year that they want to work on. Some of the techniques that they talk about include the atomic habits as well as the Pomodoro technique. Listen on and be inspired. Hi, Chitra. It's been ages since uh, we met. How are you doing? I'm doing fine, Gayatri. It's really nice to be talking to you after such a long time. And uh, you're looking lovely as ever. Same with you, same with you. And uh, I would like to start with a very happy new year 2024 to all our listeners. And uh, happy new year to you and your family also, Chitra. Thank you, Gayatri. Wishing all our listeners a very, very happy 2024. And I hope the new year has exciting times ahead for everyone. Yes. And um, like the usual style of Power, PM Power Consulting and Software People Stories, um, I thought we should do a reflection of 2023, our own personal journey and what has been, what has worked for us, what has not, like our truly being transparent about us. I thought we could uh, start with that. And um, Chitra, what what are the things that you want to cover in this podcast? Uh, I think that's a great uh, way. In fact, um, one thing I didn't land up doing this year was actually do a yearly reflection, something that I at least sit down quietly and do for myself. So thank you for provoking this line of thought and conversation. I think it's uh, it's a good time to uh, do it actually so go ahead why don't you start okay um let me start with uh, how my journey career wise went and uh, i'll also share my reflection so at the start of uh, this year or uh, late in 2022 i finished a very large uh, migration of or of an, uh, two banks merger and it was extremely hectic the, the previous one year and uh, while at that time, at that point in time, a startup bug caught me, and uh, was uh, trying to uh, had two big ideas that I want to let I want to really get started. So that's something. That's how I started the year, and had as usual had lots of goals, saying that I have to do this, this, and move the earth and uh, solve world hunger. But uh, I think, uh, in conclusion, I think a couple of things has gone well in my year. One is um, I started a new consulting engagement and going to kickstart one more in the next month or so. And it has both are in the world of business agility. And it is very, it's awesome to see companies moving. I think we'll talk about that later. Second is personally, I think I, have a, I was a volunteer for organizing my uh, college reunion. And that's happening in a week or weeks, week now. And we have about 240 people coming in. Uh, to Trichy. That's also very endearing for me. And a uh, couple of things that have not gone very well, or at least could have gone better than expected, is I think, uh, I, I do think that um, the idea that I thought initially 
is still in the ideation phase. Maybe the time has not come for it to kick off. And uh, another is another idea that we were planning to do for women empowerment, women in tech, which was supposed to be launched uh, late this year. They are yet to launch, but I think that's also that's hopefully in a better state what it is. But that's really how I want to sum up my career wise. What about you, Chitra? Wow, you have really traversed a very very interesting path Gayatri it sounds uh, daunting exciting uh, full of stories I'm sure lessons um, overall I must say a very very exciting year it was uh, just fantastic listening to everything um, where do I start yeah I think uh, let me start with uh, you know my own entrepreneurship journey uh, which took me to you know, where where my partner and I started this company called Adeptic Creative Labs. We stepped into the space of learning something that we had an idea about and so on. And, uh, you know, I think as all entrepreneurs, uh, we've had so many ups and downs, starting from the excitement of launching a new company to finding those first customers uh, and then trying to see if we should persevere and pivot. So I'd like to start by saying that um, rather than looking at it as a failure, uh, I think uh, the fact that uh, we had the uh, insight and I'd say courage to pull away um, from something that we obviously knew wouldn't work for some time this year, it was a painful decision. Uh, but I, what I saw at the end of it was uh, the three of us founders actually supporting each other through that decision, uh, which was very, very nice. It was, it was gracious at the end of the day. And even though I stepped away from it, I've taken away so many learnings, which I'm already seeing um, coming to great use in this new role that I've taken. Uh, so talking about new challenges, I never saw myself uh, taking on a role of uh, CTO. And uh, that too in a sector that I had little on, absolutely no experience actually, the healthcare sector. Uh, but it's also uh, something that has given me an opportunity to pursue something that I am, uh, that's very close to my heart, which is, which is overall health and well-being, right? So this being an opportunity uh, to learn about how the whole sector functions, uh, understand the business side of it, understand uh, the whole ecosystem of patients, doctors, caregivers, hospitals, how to actually run this business and enable it through a tech platform, I think is uh, just exciting times ahead and loads of learning again. Uh, that apart, I think, of the, uh, you know, like you said, also looking forward to some new uh, consulting opportunities in the space of health and well being. Uh, perhaps uh, may turn into uh, yet another entrepreneurship attempt. So, uh, and that apart, I'd say that. Uh, these last couple of months have given me a lot of time to go back to something that I really like, which is reading um, and uh, some exciting news in terms of uh, hopefully very quickly being able to uh, publish my first book as a co-author. Um, and I'll keep that as a surprise till it happens. Oh, wow, Chitra. <laughs> it's an amazing journey. First of all, congratulations on your uh, CTO position. I think that's an awesome uh, step towards your dreams. And I think uh, entrepreneurship bug always is within us, right? <laughs> Whether we I are think within, so. <laughs> within a firm or within so. <laughs> and you know what, uh, Gayatri, I wanted to say when you say consulting around business agility, you I must say you've stayed true to the path of being agile, uh, doing agile, and uh, also uh, what, you know, I wanted to ask you this. Do you find your experience of having been a coach and facilitator um, 
with the empower you know uh, playing into your various roles um a couple of things i actually uh, continue to practice even now um not just being the coach internally but also the um aspect of staying uh, motivated um i thought i will share uh, one practice that i have uh, been doing it and uh, continue to do in um, when we were in uh, con- pm power consulting what we used to do is on a weekly basis we used to send our uh, report it's not like somebody was somebody was our boss and sending it right it's uh, we are we were our own uh, boss and doing it so that practice i have stayed uh true even now after years of uh, doing it i think when i was in with dbs as well as when i am doing on my own i keep doing that sort of a journaling and uh, i uh, sh- share this as a journaling uh, approach while it may look like a status report from outside but that sort of a journaling for ourselves if you are not sharing it with people i think that is one thing that i have to continue to do and uh, one practice i picked it up which uh was similar to that is uh both taking uh, personal activities as well as chores sometimes we don't we keep postponing those chores what i've done is i i hold a excel spreadsheet of chores and i also have a weightage of it um something very similar to a story point and i give a weightage to it and i keep looking at it and say okay how many did i finish am i able to stay in the same velocity or i keep adjusting my daily i think what two aspects i want to reflect on one is it also helps me to stay motivated that okay a some hard to do task some of sometimes some of the things that we do are very new um for example i are we trying to go speak with uh, some of the um, people in government or um some things which we are knocking somebody's door which whom we don't even know sometimes it's not easy but having this sort of a list uh, where i have done this before may not be the same activity some similar one i found it that has given me some kind of a confidence and breaking down into small pieces right it also i i read the book atomic habits in the beginning of the year it is somewhat similar not the same it says first 4 minutes is the hardest to do once you get over those 4 minutes you are into the activity so you already have that stop loss mentality right okay i've already done it i just keep doing it and persevering it i think these are two things i have taken away from pm power as a coach and i have stayed with that and in fact i show this to people and in the act of you know being vulnerable or being you know uh, uh, being a true believer of this art if you are not believing it <laughs> nobody else is going to so i think those are things that i wanted to share in terms of my own small practices that i do so that it stays with me and uh, i say on the same path nice i think this conversation is going to give me a lot of tips <laughs> so i'm glad we are having it uh, on similar lines i think one thing that uh, i take away from my previous role which was uh, uh, you know defining these uh, the bundle was actually called smart eeas or smart essential employability skills and one of the highest rated in that was time management which which is what i think people a lot of people struggle with and so relevant today and i remember uh, reviewing parts of the script that we wrote for the video that we brought out on it and i found myself using the techniques that you know i think what i heard from you is practice what you preach so uh, that's something that i picked up which is a pomodoro technique so and like you very rightly said gayatri those first 4 minutes if you don't get them right <laughs> then your whole day pretty much goes for a toss so the minute i settle down at my desk and i have my little you know one or two things that i'd like to get done for the day for sure i actually set a timer on my phone to say that okay these first 40 minutes are going to be undivided and let me get this done <laughs> and i realize the days that i do that it you get a sense of actually you know you're getting things done um 
And maybe sometime in this conversation, I'd like to contrast it with a lot of what some of uh, our former colleagues in particular, I remember Vishu saying, sometimes just don't do anything, just be. You know, and I found that um, it's very hard to do because I'm the kind of person who uh, most of the time has lists running through her head saying that, okay, I need to get this done and I need to get this done. But one thing I've practiced consciously this year, and it's uh, helped me in the uh, decision making when it came to pull the plug on certain things with respect to, you know, the product company. It helped me uh, uh, gain clarity in terms of what I see myself doing going forward and so on is actually at the time when things appear like they are piling up in your head, drop everything and just be still. Uh, and that I've seen gives, has given me the time to, you know, it, it, it almost takes me back to the time in school where in between class periods, you know, somebody would get up and rub the board. And I remember when I used to do that, it was actually giving myself the time to calm down and switch over and get ready for the next class that's coming. So this kind of helped me has helped me slow down and uh, it also uh, was an aha moment and I had many many great philosophers and teachers and entrepreneurs and people have said this is that the the moments of clarity come when you least expect them uh, but I think the important thing is to also give yourself that time and space and just allow either thoughts or emotions to just flow through and voila, you know, that moment of clarity emerges. So that's a practice I want to take forward and see what it's like to actually drop things first and then slowly get back on. Oh, wow. Lovely. I really, uh, I do agree in terms of being just being and, uh, you know, cleaning the slate, if you will. I actually, one of the things that I want to stop doing, uh, to be, uh, you know, brutally honest, is uh, just like you're saying, just be whenever I have this huge clutter in my head, I plomp in front of uh, if I'm at home, I'm working from home, I plomp in front of a TV and watch some web series, which is high, which is the most highest rated. Oh, <laughs> I realized that that's <laughs> the the it's brutally addicting. So that <laughs> I can't even tell you how addicting it is. And that's something that I've said, you know, I've, I've put timers on my um, phone and so that I don't do it anymore. So hopefully that will stop. Because um, while we want to share what has been good, I want to be brutally honest to say, hey, these are not things that are um, great as a person, I felt that, you know, uh, while it sounds like, you know, I'm relaxing, but relaxing, just being doing nothing and being with ourselves or going out for a walk or doing yoga is different from consuming something, consuming uh, either food or <laughs> some kind of, a <laughs> you know, uh, audiovisual uh, material. I'm, I, I'm not very sure if these two are. Uh, are you know miles apart right what do you think uh, what are the things that you want to stop doing Chitra? you know the thought that's coming to my mind is different strokes for different folks uh is i think that the the enjoyable process is discovering what works for you and dropping you know what is really a drain on your energy uh so very often sometimes i also notice this that when uh, conversations especially at work become and and it's a i think it's a function of the the nature of workplaces is you know i think people's intent overall is to get things done is to help move the business forward and so on and so during meetings sometimes there's discussions that get rat holed people are passionately defending what they believe and so on and sometimes when you observe um, you know, those are the moments where the tune in and tune out, I think that's an art, is how much do I need to take in versus how much do I let go? Uh, that's something uh, that I'd love to, uh, you know, 
build up as a as a practice because then i think it uh, what i'm realizing is that uh, we all at least i have very finite resources of energy and it matters where i decide to channel that energy uh, and can i can i uh, sort of uh, tune myself towards putting the energy where it matters the most yeah i think uh, rightly put in terms of how effective our time can be because that's uh, what i'm realizing is uh, this year particularly uh, i mean we just came out of the mechong cyclone and uh, we see problems everywhere in terms of uh, what where all we can solve but are we going to be able to solve everything no definitely not and do we have the sphere of influence and where is that sphere of influence and how can we stay true to that i think that's something that we have to constantly keep questioning and slightly push our envelope that way uh, we stay challenged i think that's something that you know um, i want to uh, you know stay that way because otherwise what happens is if we continue to stay in our own um, you know perspective what happens is that becomes uh, starts defining who you are so you you stop rediscovering who you can be right absolutely i think that's a fantastic uh, thing to do and uh, in that sense i'm glad that uh, i've taken on this role where i knew nothing about so i remember the first few weeks into this role all i was doing was reading 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 it was like going back to college days and studying material opening up and saying okay what do what do these systems look like what are their system definitions like what are the constructs based on and sometimes it was frustrating because you had to really go back to a few basics but i think uh, like you very rightly said guys when you push yourself just that much more uh it also opens uh, so many doors very unexpected doors and uh, i found so many people who were willing to step in uh entertain my questions point me in the right direction and that then became uh, a very beautiful motivating cycle which uh, you know fingers crossed has sustained uh until today and i hope it goes on um, as i continue further in my role uh but it's also about uh, you know how much you can absorb and that's something that uh, i wanted to talk about as well um maybe we'll also pick up uh, more detailed threads about it in a, in the next conversation with all of this hype and talk about ai you know uh sometimes i do get overwhelmed there's a barrage of information there's literally a barrage and and uh, i've seen that most people's worry is are we missing the bus uh, what happens if we don't understand this how much do we need to know how much of this is valid for my business um and uh, i think through all of this uh, there is uh, as 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 all the hype there is with something new and you realize you really have to develop the ability to sift through step by step and slowly what is it that makes sense for you to get started with and then you also are wearing uh, the responsibility and the hats for the business uh, they are looking towards you to recommend how is it that we get started what is it that we do first so uh, i think uh, it's it's the tempering it's the balancing of uh, you know how do we assimilate this information that's coming our way and make sense of it you know so any thoughts on that from you wow okay very true i am one of those uh, worry bugs who keeps worrying saying that oh i don't know this what is this i don't know so i get into uh, more learning about it and uh, i think in a when i was being a programmer or is even a coach right uh once you define the problem field it's easier to find solutions right but if you are uh, trying to understand the solution and then trying to say okay which solution will go and fit this problem <laughs> i find myself very very non plus i'm like you know one thing, one one thing that you said just triggered a thought and uh, do you remember uh, very often we used to hear people say try to stay more in the problem space 
uh, that's becoming uh, i'm actually finding myself practicing that a lot more stay in the problem space stay with the problem and sort of uh, very often i'm discovering it's like peeling the they call peeling the layers of the onion right or you're probably building or adding layers like a foundation and then you know uh, i'll use the analogy of how people layer makeup on themselves right it's it's actually quite transformational at the end of it and then you wipe it all off and then start again right to see if different looks fit what look fits or doesn't fit uh, but i think uh, the, the takeaway there is to have the ability to stay as long as you can in the problem space allow that process to unfurl itself uh, rather than jumping into solutions uh, and coming from the other way like you said isn't it very rightly put uh, chitra because um, ai literally is um, while it is transformational it is definitely here to stay um, if i don't know if you recall uh, when uh, we started that point in time there were uh, whenever there was a new uh, you know uh, processor that came into the picture we used to go read up the processor uh, or uh, when uh, in fact i remember when ultra vista was joined in the new uh, website has come uh, you know go and look at what all are the features available i mean i think that there is always this excitement of around new but um, as uh, at that point in time i think we had lots of energy and uh, plethora of time and we also had to to be honest people who also were telling us about it uh, there was a lot of people who were also telling about not all everything that we used to go through somebody else used to say okay com- comprehend and tell us i think that sort of we, we have to keep surrounded with such people um uh, hopefully better than us uh will that will ha- help us in terms of keeping us updated on the latest of the technology as well as staying with the problem because we only will know what the problem is nobody else can know the solution maybe we can uh, bring experts in but now those uh but even those people will say okay what is the problem what is the problem please share more tell me yes. more and those are moments where like you think you knew about it but the minute the person is asking you the question your mind goes blank how do i articulate the problem now in a way where you know it makes sense uh, i think this is this is a very very interesting part of the conversation uh, because uh, maybe we should write a paper on iterating through problems definitely you know? Actually, one one uh, thing that i've discovered is uh, you know holding having safe spaces to actually explore the problem itself is to uh i think uh, you know when we when we talk about design thinking when we talk about uh, problem discovery you know and the initial part of design thinking where there is uh, you know rather in, in fact rather than move towards convergence i'd say invite more divergence a lot more and then you know uh, that's what i've noticed uh, uh, if you allow that process to happen uh, i think uh, and engaging with different stakeholders uh inviting their points of view this is of course a lot of stuff that i'm sure all, all of us know right having uh worked for so long uh but it's uh, you know in the urgency to get to a decision point uh i still see that as the uh, friction that through which you need to patiently stay the course of discovering the problem inviting diverse thoughts uh looking at it from all angles uh getting the, those uh you know uh nuggets through various interactions all of them leading to overall i say a very richer experience and i also found that it uh, it doesn't rush you into decision making or making choices or putting the stress of saying hey am i doing the right thing am i making the right call versus saying that okay this is what i know about the problem today let me set us aside for now and take a fresh look at it tomorrow of course uh, the the open question is everybody has a time like and we'll park that for now but i would say um, i think practicing it like this would give a very very clear understanding of what the problem is and like you very rightly said if we get 
the problem space right then solutions will follow yeah that i mean very coolly put right because when you actually find all the problems the priority of which problem to solve first also comes in see it's never that we don't have problems right obviously uh, organizations are meant to solve problems or so have solutions i think diverging and creating that safe space to solve it i think that helps and uh, having like minded people and building people in right building people and their skills as well as uh, their own cap- capability and sometimes capacities what my- they can do i think that i feel find it very enriching me as a person because i uh, even today on uh, september uh, 5th when i get happy teachers day thank you thank you <laughs> i often think of myself as a coach but uh, the perceiver thinks of you as a teacher so it's good to have that sort of a person who uh, persona that you sort of have wear different hats for different people different realms i think that sort of i mean is what i would wrap as a success for me as a person and stay in that path hopefully yeah, next year what is your plan for next year chitra <laughs> nice nicely put gayatri uh, in fact i uh, you know this 2 pm parians that i'm remembering quite a bit in the course of this conversation one of course is uh, vishu and his just be uh, the other thing um ever most so in in today's situation this goes back to uh, the whole <laughs> study report and podcast that we had done in 2020 during the onset of the uh, pandemic as and i'm uh, recalling who authored this whole article on sense focus and respond i think uh, that for me is a uh, these are the two takeaways uh that are coming to me from my past experience uh very strongly and i feel hold a lot of relevance uh to me going forward into the new year uh and the other are uh, you know learning to more of an observer of the process and uh channelizing energies where they are most needed at 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 a certain point in time uh so i i'd say that maybe 2024 i'm going to take these forward as uh, as we all navigate through i would say more of various versions of ai avatars fake reality and a whole lot of things that you know coming down the pipe a lot of which we don't know anything about and uh, you know maybe uh try and uh, watch more ott for fun <laughs> like you said very nice rita i like the fact that you know just be and uh, sense uh, focus and respond that way uh, we know what we are trying to do as well as um, staying true to the path um any other goals chitra for the year uh i think these are good to start with uh definitely one focus area is health and well being i think it's uh, becoming more and more important for us and uh working towards uh, trying to see if uh, you know my next uh, gig around uh, women's health uh, you know take some shape this year what about you gayatri all the best for that sounds very very exciting women's health and uh, your um, secret book project um, i am hoping that um, i am we are in the process of setting up something for women entrepreneurs in technology uh, to get the right kind of a resources in terms of finances in terms of advice help network and things like that so i'm hoping that we kick start that and uh, enable people and uh, want to do something in the esg area the environment uh, area as we see as i'm seeing m- m- more climate change happening i want to see what else can i do there to help um, build a better place around me that's what i'm looking forward mm-hmm. to for next year really nice and wishing you all the best for it 
let's uh, also find a way of uh, staying in touch through podcasts or other means uh, and wishing you all the very best wishing all our listeners once again a very very happy 2024 thank you for staying with us for so many years Thank you and uh, wish, wish you all a great year and wish, you, wish all your dreams come, t- come through and be the best version you can be. Thank you, Gayatri. Thank you, Chitra.